War has what it takes to be one of the most successful video game franchises of all time. Since day one, my brother and I just built that strong bond, just like Dom and Marcus did. Playing Gears of War has changed me because it brought me into a world of looking at games as more than just games. People that are playing these games now grew up playing these games, and they've seen Marcus and Baird and Dom go through all of the trials and tribulations that they have, and now there's this new generation, and, and the fans get to grow with the characters. We're basically minutes away before going on stage in front of millions of people and introduce the world to Gears 5. I don't think people really give Gears its due for the influence it's had on modern video games. Woo! Yeah! Shit, yeah! Woo! I felt like you were playing a game, but you were also watching a movie. Dom! No! Gears fan base is like the most passionate fan base I've ever been exposed to. They're so warm and welcoming and they love this game and they're passionate about it. When you meet them in person, it's almost as if everybody knew each other to begin with. Whether you're in it for the story or the characters or the camaraderie, it's just constantly giving fans something to care about. You're a goddamn cow! A cow! <laughs> and you can tell when a game has a little bit of magic in it because there's something about it that pulls you in that makes you go. Oh, that is so cool. I've never wanted a game to come out this badly. There's nothing else like that. And the amazing team at the Coalition is working hard to bring you our most ambitious Gears of War title yet, Gears 5. Trying not to tear up. The but... community is so special. Oh, so I mean, special. I think we've got a fair bunch of them here, to be honest. Right. And now it's come to the time of the show that you have all been waiting for a first look at Gears 5 Horde Mode. Yes, I am absolutely buzzing for this. Here now is the world premiere trailer for Gears 5 Horde Mode. <laughs> Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Ultimates and, sorry Graham, but one very badass looking drone. Yes, but before we bring the coalition to the stage, Xbox's Catalina Macedo caught up with the team to take a deeper look into Horde for Gears 5. I'm Katarina and I'm here at the Coalition Studio. Today I'll be talking with studio head Rod Ferguson and multiplayer design director Ryan Fleven about the upcoming Gears 5 Horde mode. Just being here at the studio, you can really feel the excitement and the passion that went into this game and this mode. So let's go check it out. 
we always talk about co-op is cake and not icing, that it, co-op is central to what it is to be Gears. And so I feel like Horde is sort of a really large expression of that with five-player co-op. Everything started with Gears 2 Horde. It was lightning in a bottle. It was, you know, what people look back on as the defining defensive game mode through all of games. It was the idea that you were going to be doing this as an endurance run, as a, as a three hour epic experience and a mode like without any cutscenes, without any, you know, character development, without any story had to hold people's attention for three hours. And with Gears 5, what we feel that we've done really is almost the complete realization of what Gears 2 set out to be. The big thing for us now is this idea of ultimates. This, this basically characters used to be just defined by the weapons they carried, and you were you were all the same. You just looked kind of different, and you know, because you all could carry the same weapons. But now every character has its own ultimate ability, its own special ability it can bring to the game that changes how you play. You can look over and see Kate trying to gather power, and you know that she has an ability that to turn herself invisible, so you don't need to worry if she gets in a tough fight. There's also a really big thing called taps now, which are these energy geysers that show up around the map. Because generally, when you find in Horde, you would like lock in on a particular place and you would defend from that place for the entire 50 waves. Now, in order to get as much power as possible, to get as strong as possible, you actually have to like move and expand your base to go and capture those energy taps. And every 10 waves, once you beat that boss, a new energy tap appears and you have to go and capture it. So it's really changed the dynamic where now it's much more aggressive than it was in the past. For the first time, your character will start with all the cards that they've already equipped, but they will then increase the power of those cards and increase the power of their core abilities over the course of the game. And that progression is then reset and you can do it again the next game. And this means that every game feels fresh if you can try a different combination of perks that work with your cards in a specific way. Seeing people make a certain build, like here's a Kate build, I use these cards with these perks and, and here's a Dell build. And I think it will be really exciting to see them mix and match and see these different playstyles come together. One of the things that we've done that is subtle but super important is that whenever you pick up power, which is the currency in, in Horde, that power gets equally distributed amongst everyone. And that means that if you see some power on the ground, everyone will want you to pick it up. And then we've added stuff to give more information to the players and things like health bars over uh, bosses and mini bosses. And so there's little feedback mechanisms and it allows you to play differently because now I can see that the mini boss is on very little health. So I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna get aggressive because I know I can do it. Or I can see, oh, they still have a lot, so I'm gonna hold back. To take characters and push them even further, we've added Jackbot as a playable character inside Horde. It's one of the most pivotal roles on the battlefield. Jack can fly anywhere on the map, he move really quickly, faster than anybody else, he can heal people, repair things, really he's the jack of all trades, and you really want him to be your best buddy. Over time we're gonna add new characters, and with each character we add, the meta will change. We will have different combinations of strengths, we'll have different team compositions that will be beneficial to certain kinds of players. Every time we add a new character and every time we add a new map, what we hope to see is the Horde community come together to explore this space and show us what the best combination of characters is. And so that idea of finding five people who know how to balance the classes and know how to balance the characters and know what the objective is and what you're trying to do and everybody's playing together in lockstep with each other, there's nothing more special than having that alignment and, and succeeding on that goal. So it's really, by far, from our point of view, the most intense, engaging, action-oriented, fierce, um, epic defensive mode there is in video games. I really like that Horde creates a dependency where you work together as a team and you can be successful kind of, you know, lone wolfing it, but not as successful as coming together. You know, it's sort of our motto for the studio. We always say, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. And that's true for Horde as well. It's been so exciting to be here today. As a Gears fan since Gears 1, I cannot wait to get my hands on the new Horde mode and all the new features. If you are a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, you can get Gears 5 on September 6th. For everyone else, the game will be available on September 10th. That was 
was an incredible first wave to showcase Gears 5 Horn Mode. Now, can I get a huge round of applause for Rod Ferguson and Ryan Cleveland for joining us here on Inside Xbox? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, guys. It is a Thank pleasure. You. I've got, I've got to ask, first of all, all right, those ultimates, <laughs> uh, like, can you tell us a little bit more about those? Because they look amazing. Yeah, the ultimates, um, each one of them is unique to the character. They're really something that we see, like, both defines them as well yeah. as creates a really great relationship with the team. We've got Kate going invisible. We've mm. got JD that could call in like a giant artillery strike. We've got Dell who can summon trackers to help him out. Each one of them, you're going to have to find the, the character that works for you and uh, works best for the team. And, it's, and they're per character, so it's not on a per role thing. So even though if you have multiple engineers, each engineer, each different character will have their own ultimate, so you can still mix and match. That's going to be really cool. I think, I think that's one of the great things I'm excited about is all those different play styles that you can find to kind of suit your personal playstyle. Yeah, that's one of the things that like we were talking about. Like one of the it's this is probably the deepest horde we've ever done, even though it's mm -hmm. still super accessible. Mm -hmm. But that the deepness allows you to go in and set your skills, what character you want will give you your ultimate, but also that when you're collecting that power, you're not just feeding the engineer. Like in Gears 4, yeah. you're basically collecting power to get the engineer to build. Now you have perks which you can go in and say, oh, I want to do more damage, I want to do more headshots, mm -hmm. I want more ammo, I want more health. So you as you're playing, you have this in-game progression that you can change who you are in the moment. And so you have out of game progression in the cards and you have in game progression in the perks. Yeah. It sounds like you can go like mad with theory crafting with that. Just like, <laughs> all right, if I get this combination, the yeah, yeah, these four teammates, and yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool. Um, but talking about accessibility, one of the things you talked to us about in Vancouver is all the different difficulty settings mm. players are going to have access to. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, one of the big things for us is realizing that Gears was going to be a day and date in Game Pass and mm -hmm. Ultimate Game Pass was that we realized we're going to have a bunch of people maybe who've never played the game before. Yeah. And so we wanted to create a lot more accessibility to the game and whether that's accessibility features in terms of how you control we have things like single stick control ability to turn off camera shake and all those sorts of things but even also from the point of Jack was created from a perspective of being accessible because hey maybe some people <laughs> maybe who aren't as good at gears uh, you know, uh, but the idea of like going into cover and pixel hunting shooting and, and all those sorts of things like Jack doesn't have that Jack floats above cover Jack does area of effects attack mm -hmm. so if you have somebody who's just new to the game they can come in as a support bot and they can help you they can heal you they can keep you like you know buffed up they can go and repair stuff they can pick up weapons for you yeah. so they don't have to be like wall bouncing shotgunning they can actually just be part of your They're team just and, and we really wanted to make them like a really critical part of the team it wasn't yeah. just about having like a support class that sort of stands at the back and does nothing jack is super critical we really wanted to envision him as your best buddy as yeah. like your best friend like Aww. each of the other classes <laughs> i want jack i know i want jack i want jack to follow me and that was something that now there's so much demand for jack when they're playing him you just constantly feed like your all these little birds. And he has a crazy ultimate. Like he has this high, we call it hijack. Yeah. Because uh, we're big nice, about puns nice, in Vancouver. Nice. Um, and so hijack is basically shoots a dart into an enemy and then takes control. So it possesses that enemy. So if you have, you know, something coming at you, like a scion with a boom shot, you can take it over and now Jack player becomes a scion with a boom shot and can help destroy <laughs> the enemy with that. So. That's so cool. Everyone's yeah. just going to want to be Jack's best friend. It's like, oh, don't, don't, I'll take you out for dinner. Don't worry about it. You know, just follow me around in yeah, gears. Exactly. We'll be good. Doesn't sound like quite enough glory for Benny, unfortunately. <laughs> um, with that in mind, what sort of sets Horde Mode in Gears 5 apart from the previous iterations? You obviously taught us a lot already, but... Yeah, I mean, that's probably the... the there's really a bunch of big differences. One is the ultimates. Mm -hmm. The other is this power tap that uh, Ryan and the team came up with, which is probably you, Benny. Yeah, so, point. like, we've added the power taps, which you saw in the video, which really add an element of territory control. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make Gears 5 not only the deepest, but also provide other ways to be mm. successful by not just building fortifications. So the power taps appear every like 10 waves after the, you kill a boss. And that means that you have to really understand whether you want to move your base or just let it go. They're optional. Mm -hmm. However, they do provide a ton of power to power up your perks, to buy fortifications with. So if you decide to leave them alone, it's at your own peril. However, if you're ambitious and your team knows what they're doing, they can slowly expand their base to control more territory for more rewards. Yeah. Lots of options. Well, now from software to hardware. Mm -hmm. Got it? Because of the hoodie. <laughs> at any rate, let's take a closer look at something Gears fans everywhere are sure to salivate over. It's the limited edition Gears 5 Xbox One X. We recently caught up with some of the minds behind the design. Take a look. I always want Gears to stand 
unique in the way that it pushes on innovation and storytelling in the hardware. And that was the hard part for us. It's like, okay, what are we doing with this? What story are we telling? How we make it feel premium? And that was the biggest challenge. When we were designing the console, we imagined that Kate was walking across a frozen lake, like the one that you see in the E3 trailer, and something in the ice catches her eye, and she leans over and clears a patch of snow, and she sees a reflection of the omen looking back at her. In reality, there are electronics in this console. There's no way we can put, you know, an omen two inches inside of it. So we had to create an optical illusion that would make it look like there was an omen trapped underneath the ice. We were able to express the idea by laser etching these ice cracks around the omen. We've never laser etched that much before. I mean, the laser etching is all over the console. The, the ice is cracking all over the console. Theming the controller after Kate Diaz was really unnatural because she's like the main character in the game and she is exploring this arctic environment. She wears um, an arctic armor, which is new in the game, which was exciting to us. Whatever we were going to work with in terms of accessories and hardware, we wanted to, to family with what the console is going to look like. And so we were able to work with Seagate on some amazing five terabyte and two terabyte drives that look basically like mini versions of the console. It was going to look perfect right next to it. And we worked with Razer on like keyboard and mouse. It's one of the first, I think, wireless keyboard and mouse for the console. And they get a whole family of products that all fit together. So working with Rod is an awesome experience every time. He understands how to point out the meaningful moments that we can really pick up on as industrial designers and bring into the physical world. We always walk away from these design collaborations with him feeling like our, this product is so authentic, like it couldn't be any more authentic because it's, it's so closely tied to all of our conversations with him. We're back with Bob and Ryan, but how amazing does that console look? I, Honestly, I want it so much. Massive congrats to the team designing that because that is incredible. And the hard drive. But <laughs> it's, it looks so cute right next to it. Um, but that's not all we've got to talk about today. You've also got some news uh, with our friends over at Valve. Yes. Tell us a bit more Ooh. about that. Uh, so the first time we're coming to Steam, and today you can start pre ordering today for uh, yes. Here's Five on Steam, and there'll be crossplay. So it's going to be awesome. Yay. Crossplay. Love it. Absolutely excellent. But that is not, that's not the only partnership news for Gears today. Rod, Rod, please, yeah. tell us what Gears <laughs> plans to do with Halo. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we talked about the Ultimate Edition, we talked about being Ultimate Game Pass, we really didn't really talk about what you get for doing that, uh, so we're really happy to announce that we're actually putting in uh, two characters from Halo Reach who are going to be coming to Gears of War. So we have Cat and Emil. Calm down, <laughs> So they're going to be coming and they have their own roles. They're going to be able to playable in Horde and Escape and Versus, and you're going to have their own ultimates. Uh, you want to talk about the two ultimates? Yeah, yeah. so uh, we really tried to be very authentic to Halo yeah. while still making it kind of integrate into the Gears world. So we've got the drop shield on, uh, on Emil, and that, like, we've... You know, we looked at Reach, and we wanted to make something that Halo fans would really recognize as as yes. a yeah. true drop shield. Uh, and then we've got the hologram on Cat, and it's you know she's the <laughs> subterfuge experts, and so she's going to distract the the enemy while the, everybody else goes and does something else. And yeah. it's the same actors. So we went out oh, and we got no the original way. cast. And so after coming after a decade, oh. we brought them back into the booth and we re-recorded. Re it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a it's it's small details, and you know what? We've got a video that shows off exactly that. Check it out. Looks amazing. <laughs> Activating drop shield. Deception is my special. You're safe. Like, it just looks amazing. Every time I've seen that, I've got that looks sick. It's just natural. Uh, and it's nice that it goes beyond the characters. As you can see, they got custom weapon skins, custom banner, custom mark, like all the customization stuff that we have with it as well is really cool. Yeah, it's, I, I cannot wait to kind of like get in, get my hands on with them. Uh, but we've been talking partnerships. Yeah. And uh, you've also got 
a clothing partnership, which I've lived in <laughs> for, like, since E3. Literally, right. you have to peel it off. Please, when you wear something else. <laughs> Wash occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Washing, please. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been working with the uh, folks at Bathing Ape to create mm -hmm. their, uh, they have an ape line that we've, you got a tease of at E3 with our blue. Yeah. Uh, and you can see uh, we're doing it as an in-game as well, so that blue is coming to inside the game uh, that you can wear as part of a case of sort of, uh, you know, the camo outfit. And then we actually do a physical line, which is going to be in red now, our red camo, which is going to be for sale at the ape stores and at, uh, on, I think it's xbox.com here. Stay there. <laughs> I'm just wondering, you know, I just want to get, get my hands on it. I hear a red one, I've got a blue one, I'm, 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 the red. He's the set. Yeah, it looks really, really cool. And it's, it's a different styles than what you saw from the blue at E3 and then different designs. And so uh, I was t intending to bring it with me today, but, uh, you know, customs is fun. So, uh, <laughs> Honestly, you know... it's probably a good joke. Yeah, yeah, you, you, it wouldn't have made it out here, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Although I do enjoy the Canadian uniform you're wearing for me, so I appreciate that. <laughs> That's, it's very much appreciated. You know, I, I'm going for the red theme already, right? <laughs> I, just need, I just need the hoodie. You need a bigger beard, though, if you're going to go lumber sexual. Like, you need a bigger I, beard. I, it doesn't grow. <laughs> I tried. I tried. That's oh, the yeah. same thing. But um, also, the streetwear lover in me is keen on what's in store for Gears and Bathing Ape. How can I get my hands on the hoodie? Because it's it's not it's not here. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it'll, they have their stores like in uh, New York and LA. Yeah. Again, it'll be they'll be limited on the Xbox Gear store, mm -hmm. and then again you can get it in game. All right, amazing. Oof, I'm just going to wear matching hoodies in game. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be it. They are um, very excited. Um, Rod, you might be done on our stage, but you're going straight to the Gamescom opening night broadcast. Can you tell us what's going on? Uh, yeah, and for, so, you know, since E3, we've heard a lot of people asking about, like, but well, what about the campaign? You know, we talked about, we're going to talk about Escape, we're going to talk Versus, we're going to talk Horde, which we were doing. Uh, people want to know about campaigns, so uh, I'm going over to talk to Jeff Keighley, and we're going to put out a new story trailer. Uh, all real-time all real -time cinematics is all from the story, from the game itself, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about Gears. I, I, I'm so excited, but I've just got to ask everyone in here, can we just get a huge round of applause to the Gears? It looks amazing. One, Ryan, I thank you so much for joining us. All right, and I think it's safe to 